exciting summer here at the library and even more to come in the fall. Let's talk a little bit about what's been happening here at the library throughout the summer and uh, we're about midway through the summer recording this and what's coming up in the next few weeks. Well, we're, we're wrapping up our summer reading program so the last week is here but the kids are always encouraged to keep coming in and reading through the summer and I want to especially make sure that they come in to do their required reading because the TF South High School, Heritage, and Memorial all gave the kids a required reading assignment this year. So we have lots of copies of the books for the kids. So now's the time, kids, to get in here because um, school starts in a few weeks, really. Okay, so for moms and dads who may be hearing about this for the very first time. Exactly. Uh, the schools got together and said, Here's a required reading list to kind of keep the kids reading throughout the summer, current and prepared for the next season. Right. And they provide that to the library and to the children so they know what they're supposed to be reading? Yes. All the kids should already know about this, but inevitably we get kids in here and parents. I didn't, I didn't know. know a thing about it. I didn't know. <laughs> so um, we have displays up. We have them all in you know separate places so they're very easy to find. We've worked with the high school for years on it, so they even give us their copies. So we have lots of copies. So if you get in before the last three days, you should be able to get a copy. Now, I realized uh, that you're, you are the librarian and you've managed this place for a long time, but talk a little bit about the advantages of that, that a community can have a resource like this that kids can make use of throughout the summer. And it's a cooperative venture as well with the school. Absolutely. And we always see ourselves as partners to the schools. We have a lot more money for resources than schools do. Typically, the libraries and schools are kind of the last place to get any kind of cash. So use your public library. And we like to work with the schools. And that works out really well. And then in the summer, the school libraries aren't open. So you're going to lock those books in there? That doesn't make any sense. So South has been wonderful, and we borrow their books in the summer so that they can circulate. Okay. So it's a really good use of tax money on both ends there. One of the last times we were at the library, we talked about the fact that we've moved toward a, toward a more technological society. So here at the library, it's not just books, but computers and readers and so on. Yes. Has the library stayed current now? Do you have that computer program going that we talked about some time ago? What's happening there? Yes, we have all new computers, staff and public, brand new, lovely, nice big screens, um, Windows 7. I know Windows 10 is coming out, but nobody liked 8, so <laughs> they're Windows 7. Um, but they work fast and efficient, and we have far less breakdowns than we used to. So everybody's really happy about that. So I was just going to ask that. Uh, good participation uh, yes. from people coming in and people yes. are enjoying that. And that's a huge resource for us because everybody in our town can't afford a computer or can't afford to have internet connection at home. That's why we're here. That's one of the big reasons we're here now. The library has become such a center of so many different activities, both throughout the school year as well as the summertime. Uh, you've had some planned programs and events, but also, uh, did I overhear you have a, a lunch program or something? And how did the library get into something like that? Yes, well, um, the Greater Chicago Food Depository called me in the spring and said because Lansing has over 50% of the kids in town who qualify for free lunch, that they were going to include us on their free lunch bus. That's what they have, these little vans that go around. and. The one that services us stops in seven uh, South Suburban towns, and they chose Lansing to be one of those hmm. towns. So they stop here, 11.35 to 11.55 in the morning, Monday through Friday, and they give out free lunches for all kids up to the age of 18. You don't need to prove anything. On the front lawn when it's nice and inside when it's not, it's a really nice program. And once again shows the value of making use of your public library and knowing what's going on. Exactly, because right? we are a community center. Yeah. So, Talk about a little bit the continuity of the summer program and then what do you do as you move into the fall? You have both planned performances, activities, projects. Uh, how, how do you and your team put that together for the summer and the fall? We're always planning around here for something. <laughs> There's never a, a lull, really, because we're always getting ready for the next season. 
So even when summer winds down, everybody's working now for downstairs, which is our youth department, you know, story times, book discussions, programs for the fall, upstairs, adult programs, computer classes. So we're always planning, and there's always things going on here for all ages, 12 months of the year. Always things going on, obviously for the people in the public, but you yes. as a staff have been planning and working for some time about upgrading and renovating. You've been through multiple stages. Yes. Um, I understand you've got some exciting news coming up soon. Yes, we're really excited. We've done the outside of the building. We've done the parking lot. So what's left? The inside. <laughs> and we have managed to save enough money that we can finance doing the inside of the building remodeling it, um, adding study rooms, which everyone always wants and we don't have, adding a maker space, which is a creative space for whether it's paper crafts up to computers, um, things, uh, at making a lot of flexible spaces in the library so that everything's on wheels and we can move them around and use them for different uses. Like uh, we have summer concert, we have concerts here in the winter, our winter concert series which we do, it's kind of weird because it's in front of the circulation desk and we have to put seats two ways and it's, you know, it's not the best, but we make do. Well, in the new plan, we're going to have a portable stage and we'll ha be able to put like at least 150 chairs. Mm. But when we're not having a concert, that area will be a seating area for people to sit and read or use their laptops. So we're going to make a lot of flexible areas. Too, so we're pretty excited. I, Bring I, it up to the 21st century. Yeah, and I don't want to gloss over the, how you started out talking about that. It almost sounded un-American. You actually saved <laughs> enough to make this happen without borrowing any money. We did. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, um, we've been, you know, for years we've been talking about doing this, and then it doesn't happen, or it's going to cost more than we had. So we put that money away, put that money away, and. We do not have to go out for bonds. We do not have to borrow anything. This project is going to be done with funds at hand with what we levy for our taxes. And how soon do you expect uh, this to, uh, to begin construction and what well, will be the completion time? Hopefully. These things always take longer than I think, but hopefully we'll start sometime in November and hopefully it will be done by next summer. Hmm. That's the plan. So, you know, it could be a month or two either side, but hopefully that's, that's how it'll work. Does that mean that throughout the whole winter, I just have to ask that when we come to the library, it's going to be dust and saws and people pounding and nailing and all of this type of thing? Or do you have that planned out so that it can still be used as a library? It'll still be, we're still going to, we're going to stay open as much of the time as we can. We'll probably have to close for a week or so when we do new carpeting. Mm -hmm. There's no getting around that because mm -hmm. we have to move all the shelving and everything. Mm -hmm. So, but it, it will be a little noisy in here at times. So we're going to have to ask people to bear with us. But the end result is going to be fabulous, and people will really like it. I think. I sense there's a an excitement among the staff, and certainly in in your <laughs> tenure here oh, at yeah. the library. Therefore, talk a little bit about, if you will that core team that you have and you've mentioned it in the past but it's been a while your goals your mission here as a team as you serve the community here a lot of us have been here a long time I've been here about 15 years and there's other people who have been here longer 30 years is the longest Mary Max has been here 30 years mm -hmm. and there's a lot of other folks so we really care about the library a lot of us live in town and we've seen it through some really thin times. And now, with the hard work, we've been able to make, turn this place into what we think is a real show place and a real wonderful place for everybody in town to come and use for so many different things. So we're all really excited about that. So therefore, what do you want to say to folks who say, libraries, uh, <laughs> I just go online. I, I don't need a library anymore. What but do you want you to do. say to the community about that? That libraries are vibrant places, and ours certainly is, that we still have books. I love books. They are not going away. In fact, um, for a long time, e-readers were increasing exponentially. That's leveled off. Mm. So there are the book people and the e-reader people, and they can coexist, and we have things for both. 
But beyond our books, computers, social events, community discussion, f candidates forums, concerts, we're, we're a real community center. We're a place for people to gather. And not only that, but the helpful resource of passionate people who are librarians who can lead you through all yes. of that to figure and out how it can advantage you. Everybody yeah. says, oh, you know, I can look it up on Google. Yeah. Well, you can, but our job is we can teach you some of the little tricks of the trade that tons of people don't know to make you a better searcher on Google. So it's not just, you know, you can't do it all yourself. If you really want to do it well and quicker and better, come and talk to a librarian. Well, it's always exciting for us to come talk to a librarian. And any last words as you approach the fall and the winter that you'd like to have to the village residents here? I want to remind everybody that September is National Library Card Month. And I hope that everyone will come to the library and see us. Get a library card for yourself and your kids so you can borrow books, movies, music, use our computers, and come and talk to the folks and attend some of our programs. Thanks so much for letting us stop by and having this inside look at the library on this Inside Lansing program. Thanks, Deb. We appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate your visit. Thank you.